can we help Angular drive the web forward? Oh, yeah, I was thinking about three. two different things here. The first one is we can move the web, we can we can uh, help Angular to move the web forward by introducing leading edge technologies such as the progressive uh, web app uh, things, uh, service workers, app shell, and so on, which is what the framework is already working on. <coughs> but also, a lot of people are doing a lot of very common, like similar things, which are on very low level abstraction things that we have been doing for the last maybe ten years or so in different technologies. So login forms or dashboards or whatever. And uh, I think that we can go on, like Webpack, they, they did an amazing job there by providing a little bit more opinionated and black box approach. So they're just taking care of the build. You're just, <coughs> yeah, you're just running Webpack and it takes care of, every, of everything. I think that type systems, especially of how Angular is built with tuning in mind, can help this a lot. Like we can provide some more structured way for rapid application development just by performing some kind of analysis <coughs> on top of the code and directly rendering it somewhere or some kind of uh, more high level uh, contracts based on these types that you can just grab a module, put it in your application and it is going to work on some higher level than NPM right now. And uh, why not even, even some kind of a visual UI development studio like what C Sharp had uh, has with WPF and uh, Serialize and so on and so forth. So yeah, I think the biggest problem here is just to overcome this overhead of constantly building the same things so all over again. Mm -hmm. Along those same lines, Rob and I had a good discussion yesterday about lazy loading. Like I'd like to see more of our tooling become progressive by default. For instance, having the Angular CLI generate lazy loaded routes by default instead of doing the wrong thing first, I think would help a lot of people just get web forward applications built. Without having to think about it. Well, we don't generate route, but we, we heard the feedback from Rob this week that, like, oh, you should create like just a, a basic route in, in your engine so that people know about this. Or if you do have one, you have to make it lazy. We react, yes, exactly. Why does it have to be lazy at the bottom? So that it's fast. So, and this is, this is, I guess, the crux of my point, and I talked about a little bit of this in the talk yesterday. I think that everything we've talked about so far has been about developer experience, right? Which is a crucially important thing. But part of this for me is about user experience, right? Like nobody in this room, myself included yet, this morning has talked about the experience for the users using these applications, right? And when I say pushing the web forward, the talk yesterday was about like, yes, it's great that we solve all these problems for developers, right? But part of our job as the Angular team has to be encouraging people to do things correctly, encouraging people to consider performance, encouraging these sorts of things. And that's, we don't do that very much right now, right? And we can do it at our level, but it's important for me that this first layer of our community, right, understands that it's a, it's a commitment that we want to make and it's a, it's a thing that we need you to help us scale. I think Ionic knows, you know, like Ionic is very, working very closely with us on this, right? It's a problem that we, I think it's awesome that we focus on developer experience, right, but it's user experience for me is equally as important and I want to see us devote resources to making people think about the right way to do things, right? Uh, or, or not even making them think, but as you said, defaulting to the right way of doing things. Yeah. If you look at the three goals we talked about at the very beginning of the Angular team, the, the user experience is the first one because um, you know, it doesn't matter how great it is for you to build the application, if what you produce is something that nobody wants to use, then you just wasted a lot of time uh, for nothing. It also just as good as the last version. Meaning we've learned this with iPads and Windows phones and tablets and Androids. If the same app that you build with Angular today is just as useful as the Angular JS app was from a user standpoint, the user's not going to care. There's got to be some additional value to that user, otherwise, why are we bothering? And I think when we talk about the user standpoint, it's it's not about these pieces. It's about how are they all coming together. Like when we talk about service workers and positive ways to learn all the stuff, it's like. For the user, it's the story of all of those together. So what is our story of how do we start taking these pieces that we're learning about? So I, I'm struggling with that because the user doesn't care about service workers. The user doesn't exactly. care about these. Okay. 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 So, but but yeah. we're focusing on yeah. like, okay, go learn service workers, go to learn this, you know, and so we're diving into the companies going, okay, this is this and this, but we need to be told kind of like, what's the story? How do you bring all this together? What are we building? We're building a, a PWA app, you know, instead of a, a native app, and building and engaging these solutions app. for the user by taking these pieces and building them together. So how do I how do I build together? So and and to John to John your question, right? Like the previous discussion was, well, people don't read the documentation. People don't read anything that we tell them, right? And so the only way to sort of push this behavior is to say, 
you have to opt out of the vast way, right? Like that, I think, is the point that we're reaching. That we can talk and talk and talk. And I've talked about progressive web apps on stage like 85 times, right? But unless we actually turn that on as a thing, that you have to sort of say, actually, no, I don't want this, right? I don't think we're going to have, we're going to make a shift. We can capture that in the tooling as well. Exactly. So as we are, grow the SDK and we can grow the different knowledge of an application, we can analyze and say, all right, what well, best practices are you following? All of your routes aren't lazy. If you're not using service work and be able to promote those suggestions, which again, already gets them in front of their eyes, allows them from the CLI to, or, to, from the CLI to be able to run that tool. And basically, like, hey, it's my application, get feedback. Whatever the command ends up being, that kind of ergonomic, they'll give them direct feedback, not just general documentation, but more so, what can I do, and what would the benefit be for my user? Yes. Well, lighthouse. Yeah. Lighthouse. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, lighthouse yeah. are doing something like that, so maybe integration with the CLI or. Uh, yeah, and also we want to. I, I want to, and I have like a huge bullet point uh, in my list of uh, goals for the SDK is to have like static analysis tools mm -hmm. that say like, oh, when you build, you end up with like this vendor bundle that's actually five hundred k. But we know it is that you don't use it. Like we you use maybe half of it that you could move to a lazy route instead. Yeah, well, here we're talking to the lighthouse team about integrating. Yeah. So on the, uh, on, the, on the user versus developer experience, um, they, they, there's not that they're counter to each other, but there's some trade-off between them. So if we focus, let's take PWA as, a, as an example. If we take PWA and push that as a developer experience, get on this right now, the developer experience is going to be great, the adoption is going to be high, it's going to be really easy to turn it on. But what about the user experience? Yesterday I was going to top 10 restaurants, wanted to find somewhere to eat, right? And so I'm on my iPhone and I go back and it's a PWA-ish sort of app that's able to kind of try to figure out where I'm at, but the app, iPhone, is trying to do PWA on its own because as soon as I start swiping, it's showing me the browser. So those are things in a user experience. My screen's popping all over the place for five minutes while it's trying to figure out I went back. You know, is it the PWA that it's seen as soon as the screen starts drawing? So those are things that maybe need to be flushed out in documentation examples. It maybe takes a little longer to try to go for the full adoption of the developer experience. I'm super frustrated by this because so many of the applications that I work on, so many, this gets to the scary thing. So many, so you, you just rattle off a whole series of, of technologies that developers don't care about, and I'll, I'll tell you this, they, they, they're building for in companies, delivering applications where none of this matters. See, but that's, this is why I have to, I'm sorry, but I have to fundamentally disagree with you there. I know you do, but I'm not, so let me voice it, because I don't think that one position is, is necessarily right, but I want to articulate this other side of this thing, because I have conversation after conversation with people who say, it used to be so simple, I just loaded, uh, that was what attracted to me Angular in the first place, I just loaded the one library and I went and I was delivering value to my company, <coughs> to my users. Uh, we we have a lot of there's a lot of enterprise applications out there. They're delivering 10 megabyte, 15 megabyte, and you know what? For their application, that's okay. You, they won't do AOT. They won't do this. They won't do that. And all of that stuff sounds like scary complication. But I think that we're saying that that's not okay. I that's what we're exactly. At. I, I know How many what? enterprise applications do you know that you love to use? Because you know, they usually end up being like you this have to use my application. You don't get it. Of the right? But there's a degree that you can go. I mean, to go PWA for a desktop application may not make the most sense there. Service worker maybe, but things like lazy routes are something that's easily easy to take advantage of. That's going to speed up their experience, and maybe you go part of the way. I saw a really good tweet the other day that said you better have a pretty damn good reason to not use lazy loading in Angular yes. CLI. You've got to realize this, I'm not making the argument against it. I'm saying that when, in order to accomplish these other goals, which are not the primary goal of my customer, all right, they would love to have the benefits. They would love to have the better, they would love to be able to deploy it here and there. They would love all that, but the way it is right now, we are telling them to, we're giving them an alphabet soup and we're scaring the I hell out of them. we're talking to the wrong people, though. So we should be talking to I'm going to cut us off here. So, 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 so we're, we're on the same page in terms of we want to make it easy for whoever you are building for to build great experiences. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's cut it off there and let's, let's go on to the next topic. <laughs>